This Harry Potter probably has the same number of visual effects as most of the other films, but the visual effects are more blended into the scenes. They're not as obvious. We're using visual effects throughout the whole film to sort of enhance environments, to put actors who were shot on blue screens into environments that hopefully you won't really be aware of. It was really a challenge to make something invisible, where, you know, we had to build a whole environment. I think the cave sequence was always going to be the, the biggest challenge in the film. Action! There were a lot of discussions about what the cave itself should look like. David Yates was very great about really trying to express to us the feeling he was trying to get out of the sequence, really trying to get it to be very scary, very nail-biting. So we took all of his guidance and we tried to form the sequence around that. The first challenge with the environment was the cave is a very dark, cavernous region, absence of all light. The only light that is present is from the Lumos, from the wands, and then whatever flares are emitted from Dumbledore and Harry's wand that go out and search. Because the cave was a crystalline structure cave, it involved a lot of technical challenges. And so this is one of our initial tests with trying to see how the crystals reacted to the light raking across because this flare would constantly travel around and so it wasn't a static lighting scenario for the set. It was constantly changing, very dynamic. Something as vast as a cave 2,000 plus feet large, you have trouble refracting and ray tracing that large of an environment. So we had to figure out a way to break it up in sections and handle the rendering efficiently. And then this is a shot that basically shows the cave in all its glory from about as wide of a camera view that we were able to get in the sequence. And it shows off a lot of interesting detail just in the cave itself. When we did the cave sequence, it was about 150 shots all strung together. So at the end of our work, we actually had the whole sequence that we can take a look at. It is a contained sequence. There's no shots where there's not visual effects in them. So we were just kind of dressing the cave to each shot to try to get a good composition with it. We learned more than we ever knew about caves and crystals and how large they could get and the light properties that happened in those instances. They had actually built a full-scale wall, uh, just a section, a column, actually, to represent how they wanted the strata to be because it was a very particular sense of, of order that they wanted to it rather than just a haphazard granite type structure. We use that as a, as a rough template to then propagate out to the rest of the cave. We wanted to realize an environment through Stuart Craig's vision that would be spectacular but also very spooky and very dark and moody. So I think creating all of those sort of types of effects, you know, really is the joy of contributing to the film. It's pretty rare that we actually end up getting to where the artwork is because it tends to be extremely difficult to achieve some of that complexity. And I think we, I think we got it in that case. So I was really happy with that sequence.